and welcome to the session Interconnecting Multiple Cloud with Cisco SD-WAN. And I'm really excited to be here and speak in front of um, experts, uh, mindsetters, uh, people who drive well-known blogs, and it's really a pleasure to me. Uh, but you know what? I am a hockey dad having two kids, and once we talk about what I'm doing here in Barcelona, uh, the kids get more excited because all what they realized blocks. So I had to explain, no, no, guys, you are not doing TikTok, you are not doing Instagram. It's about networking technology, and it's about cloud. So my specific topic today is not a Steven introduction. It's not about application quality of experience, what we did last year. It's all about interconnecting multiple different clouds with Cisco SD-WAN. And during my preparation, um, I had questions to myself. What are real questions you guys are facing, you see in real life? And that's the agenda, what I built based on my questions. So first thing first, why do I need multiple clouds? Why not one? So what's the point of having multiple? Second topic is, well, OK, if there are some benefits out of using multiple clouds, then the next question is, do I need to connect multiple clouds with Cisco SD-WAN? Is it a must? What are the benefits between interconnecting Cisco SD-WAN and multiple clouds? And if so, then the next question will be, well, how to do it? step by step, explain me what are the key steps for the interconnection. Can it be automated? Because we all love CLI, but the reality is uh, you need to code your infrastructure. The buzzword now is infrastructure as a code, and that's why automation is a key, and also security. If you're opening your front with multiple clouds, then it must be secure. So that the roadmap for the next um, 25 minutes. Brief introduction from my side. My name is Nikolai Piteev. I'm a technical marketing engineer. And uh, back to the introduction, I was on the buying side. I relocated from Germany to the United States around about three years ago. And I was the door opener welcoming WebTele guys coming into the building 24, looking to find a lab space. And it was a lifetime opportunity for me because, I mean, we invested 670 million into Viptela. And it's not only about integration of Viptela technology into Cisco. It's, all, it's also about social, cultural things, dealing with people. And it, it was a great uh, opportunity for me. OK, so let's start um, really quick why multiple clouds? And uh, back to 2001, I spent five years at Deutsche Telekom headquarters. And we had multi-vendor or dual vendor strategy. So it's nothing new. And it's the same pros and cons. You can debate, well, I have cost saving on one side, but the downside will be know-how. I need to test. I need to run two different vendors. It's complex, especially that will be the message from engineering. Procurement department will say, I love it, because then I can play between two different vendors. So we can talk a lot. I just want to cut it down to one number. Almost 60% of businesses are running at least two clouds based on Kentic Report 2019. So we can like it. We can really not like it. Reality is at least two Azure AWS, Azure, Google, AWS, GCP, you name it. But at least two are around 60% of the businesses. It's right now out there. And I had a family discussion because my wife, she's a senior developer um, on a big finance enterprise company. And they migrated from monolithic design to microservices was one step in between, which was VM, but now container-based. So they are actually bound to one cloud provider, but because they have container-based architecture, they don't care. And this infrastructure can run on multiple clouds. What they use is actually the fact 
that this multi container architecture is cloud agnostic, they use it in order to get best price, best service from one particular cloud provider. That's the reality we have. And I think also sometimes it's not a conscious decision to go, I want to have multi-cloud. Sometimes it is like you did an acquisition and you have then some parts of a different cloud or you have a different group in your organization which were already developing something on a different. So I think often not by choice, often we are just facing the reality that we have something in multiple cloud uh, infrastructures. Yeah. Exactly. You like it or not, you have, have it. it yeah. Exactly. That's the point. So that's why now to the question, well, we have multi-cloud world and we have SD-WAN. So on this picture, I have different types of branches, small, medium, data center and big size. And I have SD-WAN to interconnect my branches. Fine, it's okay, understood, nothing new. We talk about SD-WAN for probably five years. Um, probably more, and that's okay. Now I have also multiple clouds, and I have just three as in, three big names. We have additional clouds as well, and for many many reasons, I need to interconnect clouds as well. So, what are benefits if I interconnect my SD WAN with GCP, Azure, and AWS? The answer is actually centralized control and policy enforcement point, which is vManage. So I have actually end-to-end -end view across multiple clouds and my branches from the end user to the application. And you will see later on one customer success story. Without mentioning names, I will uh, talk more about benefits. But the key point I want you to remember is single centralized policy enforcement point and configuration system for all this. That was the key benefit out of this multi-cloud interconnection with SD-WAN. And, you know, it's really small here, tiny on the left side, security internet, gateway public internet. Yes, you need for example, if it's a small branch, direct internet access. And yes, you need to secure your DIA. And if you go to the cloud, then the next logical step will be to move your firewall to the cloud. So that can be umbrella, can be Zscaler, can be any secure internet gateway, SIG. But you need it to secure your internet breakout on one side. And then you will need also firewalls on the public cloud side. That will be the second part of the, your security. And well, I have one slide talking about security, but in a nutshell, that's the summary. Two parts, securing public internet access, and then running the firewall with your SD-WAN edge router, virtual router on the cloud. Okay, that was high level. Let's go deep and see what do we need to interconnect all this stuff together. I would say this is like a hardcore option. Do it yourself. You have different resources on public cloud. You see here VPC and VNets. And in every VPC, you will run a Steven Edge virtual router can be CSR, 1000V, can be VH Cloud. If you have only two, that's totally fine, not a big deal. If you have more, probably our account management team, you know, PMs will love you because you will run a lot of virtual edge routers on the cloud, but it doesn't really scale well economically. So that's why we have fully automated cloud on ramp solution, which will create transit VPC and VNet, run two different two VH clouds or CSRs here for you, and interconnect with IGW. We will run BGP, we will redistribute BGP into OMP and make it fully automated for you 
was transit VPC. It's nothing new. You probably know this from last year or even two years ago, we had this fu functionality. You can do it yourself. It's, it's not a big deal to um, have, let's say, CloudFormation template, Terraform script, Ansible script, which will create this transit VPC for you and then spin up to VMs. We can do it like for five years on public cloud, nothing special. The benefits we have with this solution is, for example, auto scale. What if you will add additional infrastructure? What if you will send a lot of traffic and at some point that will be a bottleneck? You have only two boxes, virtual boxes, and they will say, stop, I cannot handle this traffic. The cloud on ramp solution will auto scale, means we will spin up additional VH cloud instance and then load balance. You can do it on your own, not a big deal, but probably depends on the customer base. If we have really big customers having advanced guys doing infrastructure as a code, they will do it. If it's just a standard regular customer saying, well, hey, I don't really want to deal with all this coding, then this solution will be the best for you. And let me just quickly jump out from PowerPoint and uh, show in 72 seconds how it looks like. So what you see is vManage dashboard. You will go to Cloud on RAM configuration. You will pick up your provider, enter the um, credentials, and then you will configure Transit VPC first. You will need a name. That's obvious, and then you will pick up the software versions for virtual routers. And you have a choice. Uh, this is uh, CSR 1000V, and this is my VH. In this example, I will go with CSR. So, and then I will choose the flavor for my virtual router, two vCPUs, four vCPUs, and select my licenses for both routers, and then proceed to auto discovery. So you entered your account number, and let me stop here. And vManage did a call to AWS and discovered and told me, hey, Nikolai, you have three different VPCs on your public cloud. Which VPCs do you want to connect? For example, I want only two of them. So I, now, basically, what I do is I just select my VPCs I want to connect, I want to use here, <coughs> and proceed to the mapping. Once selected and mapped, all what I need to do is actually grab a coffee for around about 10 minutes, and vManage will do all the API calls, will, uh, what we use internally is Boto3, which is kind of uh, Python SDK uh, for all this provisioning, and we will talk to host VPCs, IGW, we will uh, run IPsec, we'll run BGP, and we will integrate sd um, with public cloud. So nothing new till now. So that was the option one, just a manual, do it yourself. Uh, if you have really few VPCs, that's totally fine, nothing wrong with that. Fully automated solution was cloud on ramp, using Transit VNet VPC is kind of middle thing now because we have a VGW limit of 1.25 gig on the AWS side. You can scale horizontally. You can run multiple tunnels. That's fine. And that's okay. But now to the new thing, which is not really available yet, and you will have a preview on an engineering version doing this. So we have integration with Transit Gateway, TGW, and Microsoft Virtual VAN, VVAN. So TGW and VVAN, new features from cloud providers, helping to scale, for example, up to 50 gig, depending on the attachment. If you do VPC attachment, you will scale up to 50. And we have customers doing this right now with simple manual steps. What you will see next is actually automation. But 
let me just rephrase what I just said. We have SD-WAN and one edge router is connected to, let's say, uh, collocation, SD-WAN edge router, doing connectivity to TGW. The same router, as you mentioned uh, before, we have a different department doing Azure. The same router will have a connectivity to Azure and it will create IPsec tunnel directly from this on-prem facility. By the way, you can have it also virtual on, on the cloud to VVAN. So now the difference is we don't have SD-WAN router here. We do SD, IPsec termination from SD-WAN router directly on VVAN or on TGW. That's different. Now we have customers doing this manually. What does it mean? Well, it's a simple vManage template where you need to run IPsec and BGP. Not a big deal, but still, it's kind of dense. You need to do something on public cloud side, like AWS will give you IP address of that point. And then you need to copy and paste this IP address to vManage and say, hey, please establish IPsec tunnel to this IP address. And let me show you the preview for the automation of that. Just while you're starting this, kind of the idea is that you don't need an um, edge router running in the cloud consuming CPU memory and will cost you money. You just establish the tunnel and run the router in a co-location where you don't have to pay Amazon or Microsoft for that, yeah? One option is to save cost and not to have uh, the router on the cloud side. We have customers still having VH router on the cloud side as well because they say, hey, I want to use specific SD-WAN features to the cloud. Yeah. And I want this SD-WAN visibility. And basically both options are possible. And you will see actually in the demonstration, really good question, thank you for that. You will see uh, configuration options for both. And one last question, because it's very expensive what these cloud vendors charge if you want to get traffic outbound of the cloud. Do you have any kind of, let's say, agreements with them when it comes how the connectivity is working? Is this a standard fee from AWS or is there a special pass? Um, I don't know. It's a wrong quest. Well, it's a good question. Wrong person. I'm a technical guy. We have product management doing this cost evaluation. But uh, just give an example. We had a question internally. What is a calculation? Uh, when do I need, from the economical point of view, TGW, compared to the cloud on-ram solution we had was transit VPCs? And the breakdown point, I think, was about five, depending on the traffic. But if you're going more than five VPCs, pumping probably uh, around 200 meg, then economically TGW will be better for you. If you have less than five cloud on RAM for SaaS with transit VPC with two VHS without TGW, it's better. Okay. It's just a lot of time. So same con configuration procedure, same idea. You go to a cloud on RAM for IS, nothing changed, and then you go to cloud instance, you will need to enter your API keys, same procedure, but now let me stop here. Um, and again, this is preview engineering. Please forgive me if later on, once we launch, something will be different. But the whole idea will remain the same. We have branches here, and they will go directly, that was my first example, directly from the branch to AWS, and there's no VH Cloud CSR here. Second option, and this is this button, a Steven Cloud Gateway. Back to your question, then this configuration will change and we will have here like a transit VPC with SDVAN and then TGW. And today I was meeting with a customer. They have, uh, it's an 
really big uh, European customer, they have on that side two TGWs. They have firewall partner structure. So it's not only one, that design, and it makes really sense, uh, sometimes to have two different TGW. But back to the demonstration. So what we have is we detect TGW, we will select VPN list and site list, which is my branches, we will push it down exactly in the same way as we did for Cloud on RAM for um, IS in the existing functionality. And then now we're switching to AWS console and see that after some time, we will have the geography saying, well, I have my branches like Utah, uh, going to this central place. And then once we jump to the topology, you will see here all your uh, VPCs going to the infra TGW, so that's the cloud side. Then you have Transit Gateway and Cisco Overlay, SD-WAN. So in a nutshell, we are following the same configuration idea but now, using latest technologies like TGW and VVAN, which scale better and provide additional options for cloud multi, multi cloud connection. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning, remember this left side was DIA security. Um, now you have SD WAN routers sending some traffic directly to the internet. And because you virtualized everything, you went to the cloud, you don't have firewall on site. Now you have the cloud delivered firewall. Cisco umbrella goes first. Zscaler, same idea. Only one difference, you need to establish IPsec tunnel to this uh, firewall. You don't want to send traffic unencrypted. So from SD-WAN, you will establish standard IC-based IPsec tunnel. And again, Similar to TGW case, you have to provision IP addresses, pre-shared keys, cipher suite, all this kind of manually. Of course, we have templates, we, you can automate this, but this is the key what is coming. This is new. With Cisco umbrella, you can enter your API key and password, and vManage will create configuration for you. It will detect all the firewall structure, it will do IPsec configuration automated for you. So in this scale case, you need to provision IPsec tunnels, which is fine. With Umbrella, it's automated. Just to clarify, mm -hmm. so that scaler is sending everything to their cloud firewall. So kind of the whole traffic goes there. With Umbrella, it is kind of a selected path. So normally this is only doing the DNS lookups, and only a subset of your traffic is sent to the um, umbrella gateway in the cloud, or do you send all the traffic? It depends on the customer. Normally, if let's say you have a branch, and it, it will have business critical traffic going to the cloud, because you migrated all your data center, you migrated all your apps to the cloud. But then you have, let's say, Wi-Fi guest access, Customers going into your branch, waiting in the queue, and surfing to the internet. So part of your traffic will go not directly to your public cloud. It will go through this cloud-based firewall directly to the internet. So to answer your question, part of the traffic will flow to this cloud-delivered firewall, not all. So it's kind of policy defined what is up <coughs> Exactly. So you will have on the branch side different groups. One uh, segment will be business critical, users going and having one policy. Second group will be Wi-Fi um, users, and they will go most likely only to the firewall. So I guess, uh, let's say, overall performance will be better with the Cisco umbrella version. I can select uh, some things that I want to put out directly with better performance, and then only for a subset of, let's say, critical things, I would like to reroute the traffic to the cloud firewall, do extra inspection, but this is only a subset. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. So my, um, 
I don't want to be too deep into that, but I guess that the umbrella solution will perform slightly better than the Zscaler solution where everything is uploaded. Yeah? Uh, I'll give you one example. Um, we had uh, last year in December EFT, because if you present this as a techie, I want and I need to test it first. Otherwise, it's just PowerPoint. So I went to Umbrella guys, they gave me EFT access, mentioned don't do a lot of stuff, but I took Tor browser and I used the use case of uh, Darknet. And they basically, if you bring up Tor browser, it's really clever. It will try different IP addresses, different port ranges. Normally, it's not easy to block it. So I was able, using Umbrella Cloud Delivered Firewall, to block Tor browser, prevent it from starting. And that use case is not trivial. It's uh, really interesting because you can do like standard filtering, but if you can block Tor browser, then you're doing something right. It looks like the Talos guys have done a good job with their investigation. Yep. Yeah. yep. So really brief, custom success story. It's an American multinational company which implemented SD-WAN and they interconnected TGW and VVAN for now manually because we are still tweaking and coding automation, but they did it. And the main benefit, as I mentioned, was um, unified configuration and unified policy enforcement across the whole thing. They don't differentiate public cloud, VAN, something else. It's just one big network. So that's my conclusion. There's no golden way to interconnect multiple clouds. It always depends. Bandwidth requirements, your partner landscape, um, what do you want to use, the internet, cloud-based firewalls. For low and medium scale, the best way to do it is with cloud on RAM for IaaS, with existing capability. And complex, medium and high scale use cases will be solved was TGW and VVAN integration right now requiring some manual steps and coming next fully automated. Just a quick question regarding this because there's also this little Google icon. You, in your example, you had Azure and AWS. What is about Google Cloud? Google Cloud is on the roadmap. Okay. We need to talk to pro our product management, but it will happen soon. We fully understand then two is not enough. We need at least three. So that was my agenda. We covered why multiple clouds, why interconnect with SD-WAN, how to do it, automation and security. Do you guys have any additional questions? Actually, I do have one question from uh, Josh Fidel. He wants to know, how do you dedupe and compress packets moving out of and between clouds to limit egress charges? So the question is about compression, about efficiency. How can I save money uh, on that? So it, the answer is you will need on both sides SDV and H routers, and you will need application quality of experience features, which we have, which you know from the standard SD-WAN, which will be run right now on the cloud and do this like DRE, um, what will help you. Or if the latency is a big issue, you can use TCP optimization using the latest Google BBR algorithm to improve that. Okay. Makes sense. And last, one last thing before we'll uh, end. Um, I wrote in December a blog post on AWS uh, side, which is talking about TGW and SD-WAN integration with CloudFormation templates. So if you have time, download the CloudFormation template, play with that, try to break it, and give me feedback. <laughs>